Howdy, this is Chuck with Simply Nuck, and today we're going to take a look at the new Provo Canyon. Uh, this is the replacement for Dawson Canyon, which is the commercial Nook. Now, what I have here is a Gen 8, as you can see with the Nook 8. Uh, Intel has changed their nomenclature. Instead of saying i5, if the processor is a V Pro, it will say V5. And then the PN is Provo Canyon, and the H means it's a tall chassis. So let's take a quick look at the unboxing. So we have the unit. Uh, and then in the rest of the box, we have the Visa plate and power adapter. So we'll take a quick look at all the parts. Kind of a new bottom piece. So we have a, I believe this is going to be a 90 watt, a 90, yeah, I believe this is a 90 watt brick. And what else do we have in here? We have the uh, screws for the Visa kit and we have the uh, manuals. And that's it. All right. Okay, next we'll take a look at the outside features of the new Provo Canyon. We have the standard illuminated power button. Uh, it can be one color uh, when it's on and a different color when it's in standby, as, of course, it's off when it's off. Uh, the commercial product does not support consumer IR or HD audio, so there's no 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It does support digital audio on all video connectors. And then we have uh, two, on the front, we have two USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit uh, USB ports. Uh, neither supports smart charging because this is, again, a commercial product meant for digital signage or servers or other stuff, but not as a desktop PC replacement, though it can be used as that. It just doesn't have fast charging. That's why there's not the Amber uh, port. All right, you can see the Kensington lock, and it does lock the bottom uh, plate on. We have a much larger cooling grill on both sides even larger on this side. What you will notice that's missing is the SD card slot, really not needed for commercial products. Um, and so it's been dropped. You can use a USB to uh, SD card slot if it's needed, but uh, no, none of the customers we were working with needed it. So that was an easy drop. All right, taking a look at the back, we have now added a USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit type C connector that also supports alternate display port and that's 1.4 and it supports Thunderbolt 3 which is 40 gigabits. The uh, display port 1.4 will support up to three 4k monitors at 60 hertz directly off the connector. There is two HDMI ports. Both of these support Keck and so they can turn the TV set on or off uh, with the computer. One of them supports HDCP, the, uh, the copy protection. So if you're watching copy protected content, you can view that on one of the uh, outputs. We have a third USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit port, and then we have a USB 2.0 port. We have the Intel standard server class gigabit ethernet port with uh, vPro support and AMT. And so you can do sideband management through this connector as well. We have a 19 volt 5.5 by 2.5 positive tip DC jack, which uh, has a strain relief. This one is missing because it's a prototype, but it'll be there in production. So you plug the cord in here, loop it through a strain relief, tighten it down, and your cord is retained. So you don't have to worry about uh, getting pulled out by accident. We have the, uh, you can see the, the exhaust vents are a little bit larger, so we have much better cooling in this product. And then we have the optional uh, IO accessory, and uh, we're coming out with a couple of new accessories. Those will be covered separately, but there are several different accessories that can actually go into uh, inside this product, uh, not requiring a lid. The display port is 1.4. There is an internal EDP 
connector for driving flat panels. You can get triple display now, either all three on the type C connector, or you can get two, one or two through the HDMI plus the others off the uh, display port, or you can use the EDP, HDMIs, and uh, display port. In Thunderbolt 3 mode, you can also get two or three displays out of it. It is the Intel i219LM Gigabit Ethernet port. The i5 and i7 vPro models also have a TPM 2.0. Uh, the trusted platform module is included. It has surround sound, 8-channel, 7.1, Dolby, multi-channel audio. is carried on both HDMI ports as well as the, the Type-C Alt-DP port. It is qualified for 24-7 operation. It supports a AC start and DC over voltage. It also supports a higher ambient, uh, up to 40C instead of the normal 35C. It does support 12 volt to 24 volt. Um, it comes with a 19 volt, 90 watt adapter. You're definitely gonna wanna make sure to use at least 19 volts and you can go up to 24. As you go down to 12 volts, the amperage goes up. It will be shipping with Windows Server 2019, as well as Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro, and Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. Oh, it does have the standard matte lid that you're familiar with, with the commercial product instead of the glossy. And then as you can see, this one doesn't have the regulatory because it's a prototype. It's an engineering sample. I'm shooting this video uh, before the launch date. And so uh, by the launch date, I'll actually have production versions. Uh, in hand. But that is the new Provo Canyon Nook. All right, next we'll take a look at the inside of the new Provo Canyon. And before we do so, I've gone and put on an anti static smock and wrist strap to uh, discharge any static electricity on my body. Anytime you have access to PC boards or to electronic devices, realize they're static sensitive and a static discharge will damage or destroy them. Uh, the failure may not appear immediately where you don't co coincide the failure, why it failed, but it will actually damage electronics and, and months down the road or weeks down the road it could fail. All right, so let's take a look. Well, the first thing is we have a two and a half inch drive tray. It's been changed slightly. We have a thermal pad for the SSD. And these new pads here we had an issue where sometimes the Nook in shipping, if it was dropped, the DRAM would pop out. Uh, the, they're spring-loaded ejectors, and so sometimes they would pop out. And so Intel has added these foam pads to kind of press against the DIMMs and try to prevent that. So that's a, a kind of a new, new feature, and that's really cool. This uh, is the commercial product, and it uses the traditional cable arrangement. So there is the SATA data cable and the SATA power cable, this is the Intel version. And the uh, consumer products use a flexible flat ribbon cable. All right, and you can see that the battery has been moved to the bottom of the board, which is what we're looking at, making it easily serviceable with its own little connector on that side. We have the nine pin black connector is for RS-232, and this goes to a DE9 connector, D sub nine connector that mounts to the back. We have our two USB 2.0 connectors. And over here we have a 10 pin USB 3.0 connector. And these USB 2.0, 3.0 can be used to power and drive uh, extra electronics that is bolted into the expansion bay or into a uh, functional lid. And then here we have our 10 pin front panel header. So this is for like a remote power button uh, LEDs to show uh, drive activity and so on. There's a little uh, rubber cover here that is covering the LED light for the power button so that uh, it doesn't, it prevents light leak. It's not really as critical on the commercial product. Uh, the consumer product, it can affect the consumer IR receiver, which this one doesn't have. All right, and then there's the BIOS uh, jumper. This allows you to like clear a, a BIOS password and get access back to the system or force a BIOS upgrade. The radio is on the i5 and i7. It's the 9560V Pro 
and then on the I-3, it's the 9560. And so the vPro means that you can do remote management through the Wi-Fi just as well as you can do it through the Ethernet port. All right, that's the inside. Let y'all get a good look. There's some uh, EMI. Oh, let's. Uh, there is a 2280 M.2 socket. It supports uh, four lanes of PCI Express NVMe SSDs or a SATA SSD. Just kind of gives you a good look inside there. All right. Thank you very much.